Have you seen these cringy and crap kettlebell stock photos somewhere online? I'm sure you have. The question that I have as a kettlebell coach is, where was the expert in the room? Only one kettlebell stock photo was decent, and that's a huge surprise that you'll see at the end of this video. But hey, before we get started, I got a gift for you. Check the first link in the description. 30 days filled with kettlebell workouts for free. <laughs> Grüezi miteinander, Gregory von Leberstock here. Let's jump right into these cringy and crappy kettlebell stock photos. The first stock photo is the American Swing, also known as the American Cringe. No disrespect intended towards my brothers and sisters from the United States, but this exercise is crap. What we can glance from the image is that the kettlebell over her head starts tilting. If the kettlebell, especially if it's heavy, starts tilting and dropping overhead, it can throw you off balance and lead to serious injury. A better substitute and way better exercise is the snatch. Backswing, top fixation, bringing the belt overhead. And as you can see, the kettlebell sits strong, nice and neat overhead in the top fixation. Even with heavier weights, this is a strong and stable position. The next image is a kettlebell deadlift from hell. Now many beginners make this mistake. The weight starts pivoting towards the toes and the back is slightly bent. This happens most of the time because we have the kettlebell too far outside our center of mass and then we have to tilt our weight towards the toes. Bending the lower back is also a problem that beginners face because they lack functional or kinesthetic literacy. What we have to watch out for is make sure that we push our hips back. This is a proper hinge. Making sure that the back is extended and the spine is straight. And this is a stable position to do a deadlift. Also making sure that the kettlebell is approximately alongside the middle of my feet as I'm st standing in a shoulder width position. The next image is a bad press and an even worse rack. The press, I see the following problem. The arms are too far outside your center of mass. This creates unnecessary effort and resistance that your body has to compensate for. The second problem with the press is that the elbows are not fully extended. This might be due to some mobility problems. Make sure that when the kettlebell in is in the top fixation, your elbow is fully extended. Biceps close to the ear and shoulders not lifted, but strong and stable in the socket. Watch. The second problem is this terrible rack position. And you see that a problematic rack position comes up very often in these cringy and crappy stock photos. Now what we see is that the gentleman has his kettlebell racked outside like this. With a kettlebell, always think about boxing. When you are protecting yourself, you bring your elbows close to your body. That's what we do with a kettlebell elbows close to the body and I'm making sure that I'm in a nice and deep hand insertion where I insert my wrist as well as part of my forearm inside the handle or the kettlebell window. Making sure that as my elbow makes contact with my body that I have a strong and stable position. This next image is not a form question but a question of misleading the customer. We have a huge bulky, aesthetic, lean, and muscular looking man grabbing a kettlebell. Now there's nothing wrong with looking like this. The problem is that it misleads you into thinking that you can achieve this kind of physique with a kettlebell, which you can not do. The kettlebell will never give you a bodybuilding type of look. And the next question that presents itself naturally is, is does this gentleman take any supplements? Probably yes, but maybe he takes even more than only just your regular whey protein. Now this one's hard to do because we have three terrible rack positions all packed into one image. Now the first lady grabs the kettlebell with a so-called limp wrist. Never do this. The second gentleman is somehow using his hand to stabilize the elbow and it's kind of like a little bit tilted away from the body. 
And the last lady in the image is kind of having a curl position. All these positions are terrible. What you want to do is, like we already talked about, is insert your wrist deep inside the window of the kettlebell, not flaring the kettlebell out, not rotating your forearm, but keeping the kettlebell close to your body so that you are in a strong and stable rack position. The terrible rack positions continue, even though we can say that maybe she's trying to do a curl. Now we've already established a proper rack position, but what you can do if you want to do a curl, even though I would recommend that you do double cleans, which work best for biceps development, is you can do a curl like this. Opening up the arm, going down, and then Sure. Other than this, if this lady was not intending to do a curl, but a rack position, you know the drill. Now this is a strange type of position that I've never seen. Now granted, of course, he goes into a squat, which we're gonna take a look at in a second. But having the kettlebells turned out where your palms are facing you is not the way to do it. Now we already understand a proper rack position, and it's the same thing with double kettlebells. The only difference is that now I decide as I'm cleaning the weight up on which kettlebell comes first as I'm interlacing the handles above each other. Looks like this. So left comes first, right comes second. Now I have that strong and stable rack position. Now let's go into a front squat. Turning your wrist out going down into a front squat like this is a mismatch because your biceps won't be able to handle this amount of weight, but your legs do. Now this image, I've seen this quite a lot. And to me, this looks like a mixture between a deadlift and a squat. You want to decide, either you do a deadlift or you do a squat. If you ask yourself, what is the difference? Let me show it to you. With a deadlift, as we already established the skill and the technique of this exercise in the beginning, your hips are always higher than your knees. With a squat, your hips go down, either parallel to the knees or below parallel. And here come two terrible rack positions again. And it goes to show how much lack of knowledge there is when it comes to a proper rack position with a kettlebell. So here I am helping you out. We have two problems right here. The woman is flaring the elbows out and the gentleman is bringing the elbows in, yes, but he does a cardinal mistake and that is he brings his whole arm to the side. Now, if I wanna do lunges like she's doing, I have to keep the elbows close to the body and then do the exercise. Problem with the gentleman is as I'm bringing the elbows out, my shoulder are already screaming at me, telling me, bro, what are you doing? This position, especially with heavier kettlebells, is terrible and incredibly dangerous for your shoulder. Never do stuff like this. Now the problem with this image, even though the gentleman is using a 24 kg, which is some serious weight, is I see too much arm engagement at the top of the swing. Now for this demo purpose, I'm also using a 24 kg. And if you're interested, these are our own Superflow Competition Kettlebells Hollow Core, which give you an awesome feeling when you engage in the kettlebell training. If you wanna buy one of these, check the link in the description. Now, as I'm doing a kettlebell swing, I can have my arms fairly relaxed and chest level is enough. I don't have to go any higher. So if I do it properly, it looks like this. If you use too much tension in your arms at the top position, you are working the wrong muscle group. Again, terrible rack position and the fly trap at the top fixation. Now, it looks like he does a seesaw press. So let me demonstrate what this looks like. Now we already know. Rack position, don't do stuff like this. Elbows close to the body. Now, as I have the bell overhead, I do not have to open up my fingers. I keep them close. If I do stuff like this, I call it 
the fly trap. Oh God, oh God. This is terrible and incredibly dangerous. Baby weights, almost no base of support, recipe for disaster. Now I'm assuming that she wants to do renegades. They look like this. A push-up and a row combined. Whenever you do renegades, make sure you have a big base of support and enough weight to hold you steady. Now this image was coined as a snatch. And I see a problematic top fixation. I see again that the arm is deviating from the center of mass and I see some kind of rotation in his upper body. A snatch looks like this. So we want to make sure in the top fixation that the arm is close to the body and again that I have a deep and good and stable hand insertion. In this stock image we see a squat swing variant where you are bending your knees a little bit more and your upper body stays almost as upright as possible. The idea of the swing lies in the hinge motion and if we're focusing on the hinge you can already see the difference as I as my upper body is moving forward I push my hips back and my upper body comes down in an almost horizontal plane now if I swing weights this is what I want to focus on another terrible example of a rack position and I really can't wrap my head around this as to why people think that this is a smart way to rack a kettlebell. As I've said a couple of times now, the rack position seems like a pain point with these stock images and we've already established what a proper rack position looks like. Triceps extension with a kettlebell and maybe your eye is already telling you this looks like a dangerous position or a very uncomfortable position for your shoulder. And you are exactly right. If we put our hands behind like this, you probably already feel that if you start bringing your elbows close to your body and lifting them up, that your shoulder's already yelling at you. So listen to your body and avoid this type of exercise, no matter if you're losing lights or God forbid, heavy weights. In this stock image, we have two terrible positions and the gentleman grabs his kettlebell by the horn. You can only grab a crappy plastic kettlebell by the horns because if you use a proper kettlebell like ours, this position is not even possible. And it's hard for me to understand what kind of exercise he wants to do. With the woman bringing the kettlebell out to the front, maybe they're trying to simulate a swing, but if you are swinging the weights correctly, the kettlebell is facing upwards like this or a little bit towards the floor, but not like this. The upright row, a terrible exercise for your shoulder, which is also very common with a kettlebell. The upright row places your shoulder in a delicate position and we want to avoid this. If the row is your focus, try using a bent over row where you are in a lunge position. If you want to focus on your back. If you want to focus on a pulling motion right in front of you, why not do a snatch? or a clean. And here comes the resolution of the surprise, my main man, Taco Fleur. Taco Fleur has a YouTube channel, it's called Caveman Training. He's an OG and he knows his way around kettlebells. And I've seen his picture more than once in the kettlebell stock world. And I truly believe that he has the kettlebell stock photo game down pat. So here I am voting for brands and businesses to call on Taco if you're looking for a proper kettlebell stock image. Now here's the next thing that you have to do, like the video, consider subscribing, share with a friend, and then check out this video where I'm teaching you kettlebells one on one. I hope I was able to serve you some educational value with these stock images reacting to them. And now if you wanna take it a step deeper, this is the video that you have to check out. Click it right now.